Welcome, everybody, to a new episode of We're Not Afraid of the Dark. I'm Adam Dutch, and this time I'm joined by a familiar guest. It's Ben's girlfriend, Ashley, joining us. And she's going to be doing this with me without Ben involved. They had a. Oh, uh, him and Kayla actually went and did another beer run because they were very low twisted tea. Twisted tea, of course. Yeah. Hey, the message is out there. We, we are trying to land this endorsement. So, again, anybody listening from Twisted Tea, better get on our game right now because we have a few other offers pending. Scary, right? A little bit. <laughs> We're at the uh, tail of the hatching right now. And actually, uh, as we talked about before, you, you watched the show growing up. Uh, for me, this was one of the episodes that I remember pretty vividly. Was the same for you? I did. I recognized especially the faces of the little girl and the little boy in this episode. It was, I didn't remember the storyline exactly, mm-hmm. but I, as soon as they showed up, I recognized especially the little girl. Yeah, I was actually the opposite. I remembered like definitely the pool scene and, and the eggs more yeah. than I did like the character faces. Yeah. The episode starts out with the group coming in and David's already there. He's making a fire. And of course, David's either really pissed off all the time or depressed. It's like one of the two. Well, I mean, depression can make you really pissed off all the time. It comes out in different ways. Yeah. And the, the group starts questioning him. And Kristen says, why don't you just tell him? And I, we, we've had this thing before. There's something going on between Kristen and David. It's never fully explained, but he gave her the, the locket in a there's, previous episode. There's a definite tension. Yeah, there's a scene in this ep- uh, intro here where she actually touches his arm. And I don't know about you, Ashley. And I, actually, wait, you can speak better than I can for this because you're female. For me at that age, you didn't show a lot of emotions towards the opposite gender unless you were in a relationship or like really, really interested. Right. I don't remember really like, female friends touching their male friends uh, in a sentimental way that she did here. No, you're right. And truth be told, a lot of the time at that age, it wasn't as cut and dry sentimental. A lot of times when you were having an interest in somebody of the opposite sex, you didn't really know how to flirt or anything at all. So it was usually just being an ass. Yeah. In my experience. Yes, Joe. Try explaining that to my 11-year-old kid. Uh. I'll get there at some point. Well, Frank starts making fun of him, and then that's when David finally admits that, or I think it's Kristen that says it here, that his family just moved across town and he had to change schools. I had a big problem with this, and this is the common theme we had in this series where, especially in the first episode, that they say they are at different schools. And the first thing I thought of, if he had to transfer to a different school in that town... Wouldn't the numbers kind of work out where he'll be in the same school as someone from the Net Society? You would think at least somebody. And even if not, it's the same town. So, like, they could get a bus or kind of keep in touch. It's not like he's moving to the other side of the country, which is my case in a lot of times. Yeah, and I mean, we've definitely seen from the, the casting here that a lot of these people have worked with each other in different episodes and things like that. And I'm thinking to myself, like, how big is this town in Canada? Um, do they ever really specify, like... They, they never spe- specify the uh, province or anything like that. I guess technically it could be a bigger area. However, they are out in the woods randomly here and there. So you would think in a more city environment, the parents wouldn't be as okay with that. And there would probably be less woods to find. So I would say they'd have to be somewhere fairly rural. Yeah, and, and there's a f- funny uh, line at the end here that I'll, I'll bring up when we get to that bit. Mm-hmm. David starts going on that sometimes going to a new new school can be an issue, and he's trying to make the best of it, but he came up with a story, and that brings us to the tale of the hatching here. Right. He says it's about two kids who go to a new school, and it's stranger than anything that they imagined. And you brought up an interesting point to me about one of these credit things. I did. Um, We have a Carol Ike, Carol spelled with a K, Ike spelled a little different. Um, as you get further into the episode, you realize it's kind of a reptilian thing. Um, I thought it was kind of funny because there is a David Icke that is well known as far as his kind of conspiracy theories as to a reptilian race currently. And I thought it was kind of interesting that there is a Carol Icke that was a, what was it? Photography producer? For for photography. Yes. Right. Okay, so for this episode about a kind of reptilian race. 
Oh, interesting find. And then we see this sewer open up and just like eat this little poodle sitting there. <laughs> and I, I started thinking about it. Yes. But you have a good point to me. This car just fucking pulls up right next to the sewer. It was right there. The passenger, like whoever was in the passenger seat, got a clear view of this dog get snatched. Green slimes left behind. Oh, I didn't recognize the green slime. Yeah, there was a little bit of slime there. Okay. I think this is the first animal death on the show. It might be. Yeah. I mean, we had an episode before where like, in the, in the magician episode, the kid comes in, the place is all ransacked, and there's like pigeons all over the place and, and birds, but none of them were actually dead. They were just like sitting out. Right. We meet our two main characters here, Augie and Jasmine, who also goes by Jazz. It says the first time going to boarding school, and they're being dropped off at Black Brook School because their parents are going on a business trip for six months, and supposedly it's one of the best boarding schools around. <clears throat> Yes. I um, I thought it was funny in the very opening after they pulled up at the school. Um, the son gets out. He kind of stands with his hands in his pocket straight up, and he's commenting on the particular architecture of the school. His dad comes and stands next to him, and it's basically like a mirror image, which is why I found it funny a couple scenes later when the little girl tells him, Jazz tells him, that he must be adopted, because clearly she's the oddball. <laughs> yeah, well, her whole get up here, and like <laughs> later on she has the... Black glasses. And I remember that was a big trend for some mm-hmm. females in the 90s. The where floral top and it, the dark glasses. Yeah, floral top, yeah. dark glasses. Uh, actually, the kind of some hipster girls I see nowadays. But It's uh, coming back. Yeah, the, the like baggy blouse thing. What the hell was uh, my so-called life? I think the girl on that show dressed like that, right? It, I'm not familiar with that show. I, I recognize the name, but mm-hmm. I don't think I ever saw it. Yeah, it was a little more like alternative 90s than like Blossom 90s. It definitely reminded me kind of of like the Blossom Clarissa Explains It All Mm -hmm. style. Yeah, Clarissa was the trendsetter there. She was. I loved her. Did you go to boarding school? I did not. Did you know anybody who went to boarding school? No, I honestly wasn't even sure that that was a real thing (laughs) until I got older. I had heard of it, but like it wasn't anything that I knew anyone. Yeah, I remember when like growing up, we saw some TV shows and some movies where someone goes to boarding school and usually it was in a foreign country. I don't remember mm-hmm. like it being in your homeland, whether it be America or Canada. Right. However, I do know in, in some parts of America there are boarding schools where the, the kids live there. And I, I later like watched some soap operas where in order to get rid of some character kids that no one cared about, they just say, oh, they're at boarding school. That makes sense. Yeah. It's a common thing for rich parents, apparently, to send their kids off to whatever for six months <laughs> again what were they doing on business for six months yeah uh, together like it just seemed kind of weird to me i don't know that's a long business trip it is and i'm also thinking timeline here uh does the board of school like go year round or is there like a break for the holidays or what are they doing right and as far as curriculums go like they're just gonna what put them there for six months and then when they get home from wherever they're going for business they go back to their normal lives or I don't know. If they've got the money to put their kids in boarding school in a situation like that, you would have think they could have got them tutors and kept them with them and kept it more streamlined. Yeah. I, again, we always put a lot of thought into a 90 show for kids. We so do. We think too much. Yeah. Now that we're adults, we could think about this kind of stuff. And I seriously wonder if the writers and the people working on the show who were probably our age or around that age when they made this, were they, were they thinking kind of the same things here? Sometimes I think they have to have because, like I was saying um, in my notes here, I've got, well, first of all, when they walked in and kind of panned around and showed the opening of the school there, my first thought was that I had seen homier museums. Like, it was stark. It was cold. It was empty. It was not at all inviting. Oh, yeah. And then the second time, because I told you I was watching it again, I went back and I realized that those pillars in the middle kind of had like a scaly reptile style and it almost looked like the kind of egg shape on top. I thought that was a nice addition. So I think that maybe they were thinking a little deeper into it and we were just too young to notice at the time, but... Well, another thing I noticed is this being one of the best born schools around, sure does have shitty security. <laughs> Apparently so. <laughs> and I don't know if you noticed this as well, but... You don't see any other staff. I did. Other than, oh, I've got did. it written right here. There were just two headmasters. Never see another teacher. Oh, yeah. That's that. Yes. Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Will, uh, no, that's the parents. Mr. and Mrs. Taylor. Taylor, yes. Yeah. They're the uh, only people working here. 
Apparently, they teach all the classes. They're the gym coach. They're, they're security. They're administrative staff. And there were so many kids. Like, I'd had questions yeah. as a parent. Like, quite a few. That was one of the things I mentioned. Like, there were quite a few things that would have kind of set me off going in there. And they just got in their car and rode away like, see you guys in six months. Be good. Right every week. <laughs> yeah. But before that, they hear a really high-pitched scream. And some girl who's having a dream she's sleeping in the daytime for some damn reason i guess she was in a nap <laughs> and what the hell is with this room here of all these beds it looks like something from like a early 20th century insane orphanage. asylum yeah or that and <laughs> i just looked it up oh, oh wait, first of all since we're around the same time period i remember another movie that had a boarding school involved did you watch the movie dutch no. Better, Neil. Mm-mm. Okay, in that scene, the, the plot's about a guy who's dating a woman, and it's his job to, to go get the kid from boarding school to bring him home for Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. And they have a shot of the dorm room, and I was just thinking, I just, I just looked up a boarding school online real quick, and these rooms on here, Ashley, look like college dorm rooms. Yeah, it's I very, mean, it's, nice. it's kind of homey looking. Yeah. You can tell that that's not your house. You're kind of crammed into a small space, mm-hmm. but it looks like people live there happily. Yeah, it's not the kids have the possessions just out of one backpack and you're sleeping under like a prison <laughs> with 50 other people. Right. And another thing about the little girl in the room, like she's in there taking a nap because she hasn't felt well and she's had a fever. So, oh, we better get her to, to the infirmary. But again, there were only the two as far as administrators go, like, was there a nurse? Like, what's the difference between that room and the infirmary in that case? Uh, yeah. In that room, that's when their parents are, and the kids are introduced to the headmasters, Mr. and Mrs. Taylor. Mm-hmm. Off to the infirmary. And... What's that? There's a weird, like, sound from the bell... And he explains that there's different frequencies for different events. Yeah, he described like jangly, like harsh tones as far as regular schools. So that these tones are supposed to be more soothing. Yeah, and then the kids watch Hertz. Is it in that room that hurts his ears in the office? Yeah, when his watch starts beeping. All right. I also noticed something. One, the, the, the scream from the girl was actually higher pitched. It was. Yeah. You would have thought that that might have set him off. I also noticed that he seemed like an extra touchy-feely headmaster, and yet one more reason I would not have felt comfortable leaving my son there. Mm. Uh, speaking of frequencies, again, I'm a musician and sound engineer and done some of these things before where I know about pitch and things like that. So actually, I want to do a little experiment on here. Okay. This is our first sound experiment. Let's oh. see if I can do this while I'm recording. <clears throat> have you ever used a dog whistle before? I have, actually. You can kind of hear that it's rattling. You can kind of hear that it's blowing, but that's about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the way that that works is, is it's giving a higher frequency that animals can hear. Yeah, because we can only hear within this window. It's kind of the same with the way we pick up what we see. We can see what's within our frequency. Yeah, babies have a little bit of better range than adults do. I believe it. I feel like babies are magic. Yeah, the point is the higher frequency the most likely you're not going to be able to hear it. Which means these frequencies in the show that hurt this guy's ears really aren't that high. Uh, the, the, the girl screaming was seriously like much higher pitch than some of the things I heard him later on. Yeah, like the little boy with the, what did he have, a Walkman? Not the one that got caught, the one in the lobby or hallway there? Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Maybe it was a video game. I... Oh, uh, welcome back. We, we were just joined by our clan here. They had to run out and get beer. Jesus. Ben, how, many, how much beer did you get? B double E double R U N. Did you notice their goodbye here at one of the rest side? It's very, like I said, the moms kind of hug them, promise you'll write every week, no attention to the fact that they just saw a poodle get, you know, eaten down a <laughs> sewer. <laughs> The weirdness with the little girl, the touchy-feely headmaster, like all the strangeness about that school. And she was not concerned at all. Be good. Promise you'll write every week. See you in six months. Yeah, six months. I mean, it's a long time to be away from your kid at that age. Oh, absolutely. At any age, really. Yeah, no one's crying or giving like a deep hugs or anything. It's like, oh, see you later. I'm going to. 
at dinner. It also they're passing around gruel. Sponge. Yeah, yes. call it sponge. Uh, Jess passes it up while Augie. He so, did at first. It wasn't until they said, like, after a couple weeks, they started mm-hmm. getting used to it and kind of liking the place where he went to try it. And he went to spoon some into his bowl and she dropped her sunglasses and gave him the, you know, ninja please look. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he kind of didn't. But my note that I have on that is like, mind you, I grew up in Alabama. Grits are a way of life. He says that it's very similar. My take is no matter what you put in it, you're not going to be able to get a kid to eat any sort of grit type anything for dessert on a regular basis, period. Like that was strange to me. Yeah. And the, the kid admits it doesn't look good, but they have it every night for dessert and it's delicious. So, yeah. What does this thing consist of? They said it was kind of a grain meal type thing. Yeah, yeah, so like I'm grits, figuring yeah. like grits or, mm-hmm. you know, what is it? Cream of wheat or something like that. I'm sure you could put some sugar or something in there and give it a more, you know, enjoyable flavor, but that's not dessert. And it's definitely not dessert every night. Do you remember oatmeal swirls from the 90s? Oatmeal swirls. Yeah, it came out by Quaker Oats. Uh, it, it was like some coloration to, to make. Uh, was it the cereal that looked like little cinnamon rolls? Yeah, kind of. Uh, let me pull up this 90s commercial. Okay. We always got like this 90s commercials here. We got them on deck. Oh, apparently it's 80s food as well. Oh, well. Uh, like oh, yeah. Yeah, here we go. Uh, Mill Swirlers commercial, 1989. Oh, yeah. okay. You could give it a swirl. That's creepy. Oh, shit. This is very 80s. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> I probably watched this on uh, Saturday movie. Yeah, there it is. The color all, the, all there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but make a smile on face and eat meal. All right. See, yeah, I didn't chocolate. want that. I just wanted the flavored ones. Oh, she just turned it off. She had MTV there to pay Jack Tell. Yep, now she's cool. Damn, this thing's 80s as shit. Made me want to give it a swirl. Not really. So you didn't have those? No, I mean, I remember seeing the commercial, but I was always really weird about what I ate, even more than, well, not as much as now, but always to an extent. Okay. In the voiceover, they say that all the other kids are cool and. They try to fit in a little bit, but something seemed odd, and there are some very strange roles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's when Mr. Taylor freaks out about some kid like having a video game. Mm-hmm. It, it wasn't Augie, but it was some other kid, and I couldn't tell if it was a play, uh, Game Boy or a uh, Game Gear or something like that. Right. No, uh, I'm not sure which one it was. I don't mm-hmm. think it was a Walkman because it was definitely Augie with the Walkman yeah, in his has, storm. Yeah, I like that Walkman because it's just labeled like stereo. Mm-hmm. I don't know if the technical definition of stereo two channels or actual stereo, because <laughs> they they couldn't use Walkman because they didn't uh, pay the rights or something like that. The kid that we met at the dinner was named Kit, mm-hmm. and he tells them that don't let anybody see that Walkman because people aren't allowed to listen to music on campus. And wouldn't they have figured that out? Like you would have think uh, that, but would have been covered. And if it was so serious that they mm-hmm. couldn't take those frequencies, that they might have like checked the belongings that came in. Um, but on a side note, as far as kid, can I just say as somebody that has been the new kid quite a few times mm-hmm. that he was really nice. Oh, like yeah. he was real quick to I'll show you where to put your bowl. Like don't do this, don't do that. He didn't go narc him out. Like he was really trying to help. He was a nice kid. Yeah, it's a lot better than the boys we saw on the locker episode where like someone tracked. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I actually kids. made it. Actually, that wasn't this episode, but mm-hmm. yeah, no. As far as kids go, he was he was pretty good one. It says that after a few weeks they. Used got used to the roles, and even started to like the place. And my, my thought was, what is there to like? It's obviously they're not having fun there. There's a lot of strict roles, and they can't listen to the music. And, and how were they managing classes with only two adults in the building? Very good question. Uh, yeah, this, this staffing issue I wish they had given us a little issue. more insight to those couple weeks. Uh, then one night shit goes bad. <laughs> They hear a sound, and then they notice that all these kids are sleepwalking. The tone went off that made it so it was like a drill. But they aren't affected by this because they never ate sponge. And this sequence <laughs> of these kids sleepwalking was really fucking long. And this it, goes off like a minute. It did. It took a second. And even once they got down underneath and before they figured out like what it was about, I thought it was kind of cute, though, how he was faking it and scared the little sister. Yeah. 
they make their way to some kind of pool and there's a bunch of kids like putting some type of salt in there and there's a bunch of eggs and this pool looks like shit i mean i thought it was like all green and stuff it honestly looked like a water treatment plant <laughs> like i've been <laughs> in a couple that's uh-huh. exactly what it looked like augie suggests that they get to the authorities but jess says don't be such a chicken <laughs> like she's playing all badass here and this is one of the few episodes I think where a younger sister actually is more powerful. Than I was going to say, let's be honest. Right. I think she was a little tougher than him anyway. Oh, yeah. She tries to talk the kid, but he's too far out of it in, in some kind of dazed hypnotic state. They say the obvious here. They're hypnotized and they're told <laughs> what to do. Jazz gets one of the eggs out of the pool and says, it's an egg. And I had, <laughs> here's my biggest gripe with this episode. They can Other see that the from thing. the top deck. Yeah, well, <laughs> they have to explain everything that's happening in this episode. It gets worse when we get towards the end, by the way. It kind of bothers me that they explain the obvious and then the things that we've mentioned, like the dog in the sewer, that were obvious to us never got touched. <laughs> yeah, well, it's our stuff's unexplained. And there's a really corny line here where Mr. and Mrs. Taylor come in and say, excellent, kind of like excellent because mm-hmm. there's eggs going on there. Excellent. And they're just up and talking, like explaining the whole fucking plot here for us. <laughs> to each other, like they don't know. <laughs> yeah, they, this has been going on for a number of years, obviously, because there's a later line where they say it's been waiting for hundreds of years. Was this still when they were, are you talking about when they were in the office talking no, that's, together? That's, like, that's later okay. on, but we're still the pool thing right. here. Augie and Jazz have to pretend like they're hypnotized. They did all right. Yeah, and Mrs. Taylor makes a comment here. She didn't think they were eating the sponge. But it's been a few weeks passing. Why did was this not figured out? Like, how long does this sponge thing take effect? Right. And it, I guess since they're serving it every day, it's kind of a short term that they have to refresh rather than eating it once and you're good forever. Uh, I don't know. They sneak conveniently to the office where Mrs. Taylor says the incubation is almost complete and they have these giant martini glasses here. <laughs> She says that the master is pleased and has been patient for hundreds of years. Mr. Taylor, for some reason, takes off his skin, showing that he's some type of... Re- when he pulled his sleeve up. <laughs> yeah, I had a note that about now? that. Um, well, they he pulled his sleeve up and everything and showed that he had on like the human skin glove hand thing, showed his reptilian arm. But, and mind you, I rewinded it at least four or five times when he took a sip out of that martini glass and they made such a point to show him licking his lips. It was a very human tongue. Like, no pointed, no reptile type anything. I thought that was kind of interesting. Like, they made a point to show that and zoom in, but it looked completely ordinary. I know this show was not produced by Nickelodeon, only aired on there, but I couldn't help but think of the green slime reference for Nickelodeon because that was like a major mascot image for True. them in the 80s and 90s. Yep. So now they're reptile aliens. Jazz gets on her brother about always following the rules. She says that she wants to get out and he tries to go to sleep for some fucking reason. I mean, didn't he just mention going to get the authorities a little while ago? Right. And then what killed me is from there, they split up and she's like, I'm going to go get my stuff. After I saw all of that, <laughs> yeah. forget the stuff. And if you need to get it, do it together. Yeah, I like, I didn't understand change. Like, you them. You haven't ready to bust the fuck out of there. Right. I didn't understand the whole, okay, time out. Let's get dressed and get all our stuff together and I'll meet you. No, let's go now. Yeah, Mrs. Taylor catches Jazz and she escapes by biting her hand and i mean it, it goes like right through her skin like <laughs> how kind of weak were these human outfits they had on it's true and they've lasted how long this was supposed to be an award-winning top-notch boarding school yeah as if no one would have figured out this uh plot before then i mean i guess maybe she had backup hands yeah oh and s- some of the acting in this episode is terrible especially on the part of the child boy actor like i actually laughed out he was definitely a little stiff in some places but i kind of felt like that was kind of meant to be part of his character too kind of like him and his dad at the beginning like i said mirror Mm -hmm. image talking about the architecture yeah it seemed like that was kind of who he was but they were they definitely over and underacted some scenes it seemed like they start going towards the x but ended up in some kind of steam basement the lights come on and we get this kind of or Friday the 13th sound, <laughs> right. sound music happened there. They see the headmasters 
who say they should have eaten the sponge <laughs> and they can't be let out to tell their secrets. They're the last, again, this is them having to explain everything. They say they're the last of their race that was doomed to extinction and they're waiting for the hatching. So they're just going over the whole master plot here. Mm-hmm. That's so, the mistake they always make in those shows. Yeah, you know, it says that once the eggs are hatched, the kids will serve another purpose, which means they're going to eat. So apparently this thing not only eats children or not only eats poodles, but also eats children. <laughs> I'm still unclear about who ate the poodle. Yeah. Uh, How, like, they're in there with the kids, mothers locked up in the basement. Yeah, I don't think that scene was even necessary at the beginning. I, I don't. The, the like, it was up. definitely kind of a... <gasps> Yeah, but and we didn't. get so many episodes of Are You Afraid of the Dark that start out with a car driving to some destination. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's like very common. I mean, they just want to spice it up or what happened there. They almost could just use the same one. Yeah. They say that very few children have caused problems, but when they do, they're put down there and they get to meet the mother. Where are the parents? Uh, Somewhere off. I guess they can call. <laughs> I don't know where. I just mean, like, isn't there any kind of accountability? They're going to let the mother eat these kids. Like, there's what about the kids who have been a problem and they've taken care of? Like, I don't know. I feel like there would have been something somewhere. Someone would have had a question. What do you think of this evil creature? I honestly <laughs> I've seen more realistic work in fun houses. I thought that was a little humorous. Um, And the other thing that caught my eye was apparently the mother and the headmasters are of the same race that they're trying to hatch all the little eggs. That mother could have never gotten no human skins and passed for like, I didn't understand that. Like if you're the same, how are you so different that they can dress up as a human and you're down here like in the, yeah, that that was the master, I guess. Uh, yeah, but I understand the whole concept difference there. Augie decides to grab the now because he has to walk on the play high frequency sound. He just took one of those speakers that was used as the intercom with him. I mean, that, that requires like some type of he could have just knocked it off sort, the wall. But... Maybe I don't know. He just well, plugged the spe- or yeah. cords into his like. I don't, I don't, I this is the salary we're coming up. I don't remember power speakers being a big thing in the 80s, especially those intercom kind. So I mean, that's true. Uh, yeah, cassette just has the tiny speakers on it, but mm-hmm. he still has a bad shit happening here. He plays some cassette that has some 80s instrumental, uh, heavy metal music on it. It was probably the same one used in the uh, dark music episode. That one had kind of some revive where it's used as a plot device there. The head is exploded, so it's slime all over the place. And nothing, literally all yeah. over. <laughs> Yeah, I did think that was kind of fun. And nothing remains of the tailors except for their clothes and their shoes. They go back upstairs to find the broken eggs, and the children have woken up out of their trance, not knowing what's happening. Can I just say I'd have been a little more careful? Like, if I realized what we had just narrowly avoided, like, I'd have wanted to make sure that there were no whole eggs left yeah there's a, that that's the kind of plot twist at the end here if you want to call it that there's one egg that starts rolling around and it starts hatching i mean i understand the hurry to get out of there but mm-hmm. at the same time like you just narrowly avoided something pretty big and walked away with a continuation on the floor hatching well my biggest issue with, with that is they know how to destroy it now mm-hmm it won't be that hard to kill this fucking thing. That's true. They could have just gone yeah. and plugged something in over the speakers, wherever the main, I guess, hub would be. You would know more about that than me. Uh, a lot of issues in this episode. And Gary says the corniest line I've heard in All Your Fear of the Dark here. He says, everybody go straight home because it's a school night. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what the For hell? who? For them next day, I mean, uh, we, we talked about the timing, the minute society. Uh, we have assume they're not meeting at midnight just because like i i doubt that someone's going to let their 15 year old daughter out multiple nights a week to go uh in the woods to tell stories you want to call it that that's true i mean if my kid told me that i'd assume it was a shtick anyway what are your final thoughts here ashley honestly overall i thought it was a pretty good episode there were a couple things that i thought were a little wonky and maybe not as thought out but mind you i'm looking at that from my age now versus when I was watching it, when it was put out back then, I feel like overall it was a pretty good one. I've seen far, you know, less believable, less creepy 
out of what we've watched so far. Yeah, I agree. This episode for me growing up was one of the most memorable, and I remember enjoying it a lot when I was a kid. And I can't remember the exact details, but I, I like that it was in a like I never went to boarding school, and it was fun seeing these kids at the time, like having to discover this and destroy this creature. But yeah, I, I obviously didn't have these questions as an adult. And I, I did like the episode a little bit less watching it today when I reviewed it, just because there's a, some plot holes here that needed to be covered up. Like they, they we're jaded had, now, Adam. What? I said we're jaded now. Or I'm educated. <laughs> Same thing. Yeah. <laughs> I think for me, if they would have had some staff there that were kind of like the 13th floor episode where there's other aliens involved, it didn't mm-hmm. have to be two people. Right. And it showed them doing more at the school other than just eating or walking around amps in the hallways. Mm-hmm. We don't actually have a classroom here. It's one of the few No, episodes. we didn't see a single one. Yeah, of course, this being a kid's show, we have child actors. I mean, school is a big part of uh, this show. We see kids in school and in classrooms all the time, but this episode didn't have that. What you, how are you guys doing over there? By the way, we're joining back. I hear rumbling yeah, in the boxes. Uh, ben and Kayla came <laughs> back from grocery shopping. and you just got beer and what else? Hey, did you guys watch this episode? No, I didn't watch it. Right. You missed out. It, it's, but, one, it's one of the better ones to see the two, to be honest with you. I think the one that we do is pretty good, too. Well, you guys have been talking. Um, I did read, like, the overview. Mm-hmm. And reading it, I, I do remember this one. All right. What do you so, got? I mean, I do know, I do know how it ends, and that that whole like, oh, they missed an egg and it's hatching and all that stuff. I do remember that, and I'm sure if I watched it, I would. It would all come back. Yeah. Again, everybody, thanks for listening to We're Not Afraid of the Dark. Be sure to subscribe, leave us a review. This is produced by Majestic Studios, and Ben and I, and Ashley and I, and Kayla and I, <laughs> are on Facebook. We're Not Afraid of the Dark. Also on Instagram, we're not afraid of the dark. There's no apostrophe in the Instagram. We also have email account now. We're not afraid of the dark at gmail.com. Again, no apostrophe there. Thanks for listening. And, and no please join us. Either. No, what? What? <laughs> hey, uh, by the way, we, we got our last episode of season two next week. Oh, man, uh, Cochran. And we got a major fucking goof in that episode, by the way. We have the video already up on YouTube and our Instagram, so be sure to check that out. We're we gonna need be... to, we need to put that on our Instagram. It's already uh, yeah. No, it's not on there. Uh, it will be soon. Okay. By the time it's airs, it will be. Okay. Yeah, that's it. All right, we're gonna be joined next week also by John Young again. See everybody then. Who they need when we leave you in your casket? That's tragic. Peep me in my genie flying past it. I'm Aladdin getting blasted. Blasting this rap shit. Plaster black and now talking smack with savage crackers. I'd rather be a jackass than average, I guess. I'm just a savage at the practice. Like a master, no less, the best.